What's up, Twitch? What's up to the YouTube viewership, man? This is Needed Podcast episode 16, and this is the start of going to be a, probably four or five different podcasts to go over what happened this week. It was the Man Club Championship, man. I hope you all you guys tuned into it. I know I did. I watched every game. I really enjoyed it. It was definitely some Madden that I haven't seen. I, and definitely a bunch of different plays, a bunch of different schemes that I have not seen because we haven't seen a lot of these players play, man. And this was really just the first chance we got to see a lot of these great players play with Salary Cap, play with Route Kems, play with Michael Vick, play with everything they've been hiding for many months and many uh, weeks leading up to this event, man. And it definitely it did not disappoint. There was tons of great games. And it really was uh, pretty much what was expected. You know, everything was great from the from the production standpoint to the broadcast team. Everything went pretty well. And, and what's crazy is, that, I mean, the new guy, the new young boy, Pavan, who is on the mic with me now, was able to win it. And Pavan is joining us. He's going to talk about his experiences, not only in the game, but also at the championship. So, Pavan, first of all, congratulations, and I appreciate you joining us. Hey, thank you. No problem. Uh, yeah, so... I mean, first, I got, I got to go into your mindset coming into this tournament. Like you said, we had just talked that you the first game you had was kind of a real random dude that nobody really knew about, nobody expected. Nobody pretty much picked him to win that first game. So talk about your mindset going into not only that first game, but the entire tournament. You hear me? I don't know where my man went. Uh, sorry, Doug. Oh, my go. internet's kind of jumping right now. Oh, yeah? Say the question again. Oh, I was just talking about uh, what was your mindset going into the whole tournament? Not only uh, – first of all, starting with that first guy you said, War Daddy, wasn't – nobody picked him to win. But just your your mindset going into the entire tournament. Um, basically, I had been thinking – because me and Alan, if we were both to win our first game, then we would have matched up. I was honestly thinking about just winning that game. That was the most important game to me, because mm-hmm. you know, you jump from twenty k or seven point five k to you know twenty k, and then you could you go up from there. You know, have momentum or whatever. That was a game on like everything. That was a game, and you know, everything in the tournament to me, because you know, we played a lot, and I already knew he was gonna be so hard to beat. Mm-hmm. But that was my main thing. Now, that does Allen beat you most of the time when y'all play? Uh, it's fifty fifty. Yeah. Okay. Um, it goes more like it could be 55, 45, or 60, 40, but I would say it's like 50, 50. Okay, there you go. But I know you couldn't lose that first game. You couldn't go all the way out there, win the Raiders Club, yeah. and lose the Ward Daddy. I know that game had a lot oh, of no, pressure yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a game. Especially just playing some random guy that you're the favorite, by a long favorite. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that adds pressure to your, to your first game. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, the one thing – um. Now, Alan's your boy, right? Did, did picking teams, did that ever? Did y'all ever talk about, you know, I, I'm picking the Raiders, I'm, you know, I'm the defending Raiders club championship. Why did he choose to pick the Chargers? Did y'all ever talk about that? Yeah, uh, first it was because uh, he, we didn't know if he would be able to compete. Mm-hmm. And at first he wasn't. But then obviously everything that happened in Jacksonville, you know, prayers are done and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, that pushed back to like two weeks or something. Yeah. And Alan's birthday, he was 16 at that point. So, I guess he just – it was like a rush, so he picked just his team that he wanted, favorite team, mm-hmm. Chargers. And, you know, I was probably at in class or something, and then uh, that's what had happened. Okay. We really th- didn't think about it at first, but then as, you know, year uh, went on and stuff, we realized we were both really good, then then it started, like, kicking. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I mean, that's something you always plan about. I mean, we would always see, like, man, we could really play each other as long as we're not playing early in the tournament. You know, it's yeah, all good if y'all exactly. final four because then y'all both already making mm-hmm. a lot of money, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, man, that's just, uh, you know, but. Uh, and, yeah, we have something for uh, next year that he said we agreed that like, winner would have to go to a different, like, division or loser would have to go to a different division or a different conference or whatever. And then he saw the signing, but he said he's going to do, like, AFC North or something. Oh, okay, AFC North. Either. Okay, so. All right, well, shoot. I mean, I, I guess it worked out for you. Uh, and like I said, you won the first game. I said we didn't really see that. That wasn't on stream. Obviously, that War Daddy guy was somebody that you glad you got by. And uh, but then the next game was against Jeff, and he had just beat Allen. So how much did that help you that he had just beat Allen? How much did Allen turn around and help you to prepare for that game? 
right after he lost, uh, he just went up to me and just started telling me everything. He was upset, obviously. So, mm-hmm. you know, I let him chill for about an hour before I started, you know, go oh, yeah. interrogation, ask him, like, all these questions. Mm-hmm. But after he was, like, you know, chilled up, he, we went back and, and watching uh, the past broadcast where he just basically started telling me all this stuff. Oh, and yeah. then, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely now, like, when my friends lose, I never let, like talking to them right away. I let them look pretty much just they got to reach out to me. Exactly, After they yeah. lose, I'll be like, I'm going to leave you alone, really. You know where I'm at. You know how to find me once you get over it. Yeah. But, uh, that, I mean, that, that, no, but he, yeah, go ahead. Uh, he was, he told me that just to turn on Ag from the first play of the game that he didn't fake Ag. So you know, that obviously got me out of luck. Yeah, that's crazy. That's uh, definitely. I don't, I don't know what that comes. I guess just not playing that many serious games. You know, obviously you go play your boys, and if I play my guy, I'm never going to put it on aggressive because it's just exactly. not, you know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. And if you play 100 mm-hmm. games against your boy, you're not used to that same, I got a fake hike mm-hmm. every other play. Yeah. You know, you get in that mindset yeah. where you're playing a game to play. Yeah, just, just like a free-for-all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that, but that's definitely – and that goes to Turbo Jeff. I mean, obviously he's played in some some decent-sized games, but, I mean, you guys have – you probably have a little bit more experience than him being in a club mm-hmm. being a club champion yeah. last year. So he's not that experienced on that big a stage. Yeah. So definitely a rookie move, not not fake hiking. But uh, like I said, before I get into the games, I want to get into your team. We can go talk about these games all day, but I want to get into your team. You sent me this lineup, and Griffin, we could bring up this lineup on the screen. I want to go over just, just – I mean, the things that you – like in the team, and this is your hundred thousand dollar team. This is a six figure team. So this, I think, I'll tell you one thing, Pavan, is that I want you to save this team. Like screenshot it. I want you to, uh, you know, print it out, post it on the wall. Cause I don't <laughs> have my team anymore. They don't have men. Oh wow! Uh, I'm telling yeah. you, and I wish I could go look at my team and save it forever. But I'm telling you, save this team. And uh, yeah, I will. I will. For Thank sure. you about it now. I probably will, yeah. Yeah, you have to because uh, you can look back and, man, dude, I wish I could see my team and my 10-cap linemen back in Man 17 <laughs> and Jimmy Graham and all that. Oh. I, know who they, I know exactly every position who they were, but it's just, it's yep. just not a screenshot, yep. you know. And it's a big yeah. deal. I see you got, I mean, this Andre Robertson, I put, a lot of people had him. See, me, I'm being yeah, honest, no. I really didn't even know about him because I guess I guess yeah. you got a double sprinter, right? Yeah. See, so everybody is pretty much 98 yeah. speed, huh? Yeah. Jeez, Jesus, and then you got Shannon Sharp. That's just, I mean, talk about, now this is something, obviously I think this year is really not a crazy running year, but having this this 31 cat Marcus Allen, I looked at him, looked at the power-ups, but I've always been a fan of having a really good running back in uh, big tournament games just to be able to bleed the clock a little bit, score touchdowns inside the fire. Talk about going with Marcus Allen. All right, so I don't really, you know, I do run the ball when I need to and mm-hmm. when I'm up and stuff. Well, I don't really run like that. Last year, I used a 13-cap running back in club series. So using someone like Marcus Allen was actually, you know, upgrade for me. Yeah, so, yeah. For sure. Because it definitely, uh, uh, I, don't, I guess you, you always, that's why you have Shannon Sharp kind of almost doubles as a running back when you get inside the five. Yeah, yeah. Like, inside the five, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, often, so you got the Vic with both. You got the 128-cap Vic. Yeah, I had to, had to get the best one, exactly. You like the gunslinger that much? I, I haven't used it enough to really notice that huge difference. At first, yeah, yeah my, um, at first, that's what I was saying, too. But then when it kept playing, like, you could run back or, like with Vic and just throw it right away or even throw on the throws on the run. Yeah. And just, gunslinger is just, I don't know. It sometimes does hurt you with the low balls, but uh, I think it's better to have, you know, than no, not have. No, I keep trying. I mean, then Randy Moss, I thought – Randy Moss was a must on every team. I think if you didn't have Randy Moss, so you weren't trying to win. That's just how. I oh think. yeah, I had to get at least one big wide receiver that I could you know yeah. get catch the jump hitch, balls, catch a hitch, catch a post. Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's look at the defense, man. I, I, I'm sitting here using 80 cap Clowney on D line, and you got these 24 <laughs> cap, 25 cap guys. Like that, that's the one thing that that stood out to me right away. And talk about these these twenty five cap D linemen that you have and why they fight. Oh, okay. So in three three five, the the defense is like it's just really glitchy. So it doesn't matter, you know. Obviously, you the better player you use, it'll be better. But from what I was playing and just setting up the defense, I would get a lot of one on ones, mm-hmm. and 
the running back would come out because you know if even if you do get a shed, the running back will be there to chop block or whatever. Yeah. But the running back will just dumb out a lot, and the O line will just dumb out, oh, yeah. and just a lot of people just come in free or just even if if it was a one on one, that Bosa was shedding their right tackle a lot of the time. Oh yeah. Now talk. What, what's the spit? The one thing I always loved about Clowney and Mac is they were fast. Once they got off a of black man, they could catch Vic. They could crash him down. I feel like are these guys any any speed to these D linemen? Uh, they're not really fast, but that's why I have, like, Anthony Brown, and I blitz him in, like, 90 oh, yeah. speed, like, Eddie Jackson or whatever. Yep. They're the ones who do the blitzing, so, you know, it's going to be kind of hard to run away from them. Yep, but I heard you say that do. about seven times. Yeah. You can't run away from Anthony yeah. Brown. So I, Yeah, I, no, I yeah. played Allen, I played Henry, they just run away from the blitz all the time. Yeah. And so I had to put, like, the fastest, cheapest guy oh, there. Yeah, just for to, sure. That definitely pissed me Vic off down. when Vic would just run back 100 yards and my spy yeah. couldn't get to him or my blitzer couldn't get to him. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So where do we go? We go Eddie Jackson and Ed Reed, a linebacker, outside linebacker? Yeah. Uh, I put Eddie Jackson in the right, left of screen linebacker. Uh-huh. And then I put Ed Reed on the other side. And I just – I would either blitz one of them or just, you know, send four with, like, a mid-read, a hook curl, or hard flat. Mm-hmm. Okay. De- they're decent. And they're both, like, like 89 speed, so low cap as well. Yeah, you see a Can't lot hit. a lot of guys yeah. out there with the uh... – you know, like that would have Sean Taylor, you know, uh, Derwin James. You got a lot more corners. And, and and it's a lot of plays that I watched this week that I felt like Jalen Ramsey would have made a lot better plays than, than some of the safeties that guys had out there. Oh, talk, yeah. Talk yeah. about going – because I feel like you have a lot of, like, guys that are quicker, better agility, can go get the ball just when you click on. And I feel like that, I feel like that for some people might have been a better move because as much as hitters as people had, I didn't see that many crazy hit stick fumbles or anything like that. Exactly, yeah. Um, well, for me, it was – I was going to use the hitters in the clouds, but then – uh, I played a lot, and I've seen the um, just sometimes putting a soft squad would just be so helpful on the solo side. And, you know, Atwater or whatever can't really do that as well as like, uh, Fuller would. Fuller, 96 speed. Mm-hmm. And then also I liked how they, they, were, they, they could play zone and man, like, really well, but they could hit decently well as well. Yeah. They both, like, have 80 hit power. So, you know, it was, it was a good value to me. And then uh, – I had to have Ronnie Law on there because he's 41 cap, 90, 91 hit power, whatever, even 91 speed. Oh, Just yeah. Have I mean, shoot, he yeah. probably made the biggest play of the tournament. Yeah, exactly. Me, really. Exactly. Um, he went yeah, wild. So, I don't know why, but he did. So, damn, this definitely – I mean, that definitely looks tough, honestly, because you still got the decent DBs, and, and they're really not spending that much cap on these DBs, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even Jalen Ramsey. What Jalen Ramsey is sixty? Oh, I guess sixty nine cap. I guess the yeah. I guess the one I was using was like fifty nine, and this upgrade only takes him to sixty nine. Yeah, oh, that's it's not a the good power up, is it? It's just the, the playoff one. No, it's just the stock limited. Yeah, oh, okay. I could. I had to. Okay, oh, but yeah, good. it's still a good upgrade because he gets to ninety five speed with a thirty thirty, and that, Ramsey with ninety five speed, you can, you have to have that card on the field somewhere. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Do you use the lockdown chemistry too? Yeah, it was it was like at twenty four out of thirty, I think, which was really good. Oh yeah, for sure. So you're probably up to like ninety six, man, ninety eight, all that. Yeah, he's probably tough as hell. Yeah, yeah, shoot, it looked good. I mean, what let's talk about? I I, I see all you guys with this damn Bailey, man. Mm, he just we got a tank somewhere with the the high offense. I use a lot more, you know. I use a more better defense than a lot of people. Like I know Allen just goes like so much cap on offense, but I evened it out. And then I just had to get a 10 cap kicker. I know you use a good kicker and all, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It didn't cost me this week, uh, this time. It's so. honestly though, it's a little bit different this year. I don't. I think last year the difference between like a 25 cap kicker and a 10 cap was huge. Yeah, this year it's yeah, not, I can, it's not I can crazy, see that. Yeah, crazy mm-hmm. different. I think the whole year I, I was using a 14 cap kicker with like 86 kick power. So. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it's like the last year it was definitely I thought it was a big deal. Especially last year yeah, I felt like it offense was, yeah. was hard uh, offense was hard oh, yeah. last year yeah. with the ninety one zone and all that stuff. I was like, yeah, man, exactly. give me somebody that if I can squeeze in the field goal range, I'll go ahead and get a field goal. That's why I always wanted a kicker. But I could definitely see some yeah. plus the kickers are kicking it out of the back of the end zone. That now was they are reason. exactly. Yeah, that was yeah. another reason I had Matt Prater last year. He could boot it to the back of the end zone and mm-hmm. help with my kick coverage. But yeah, and this year I don't think it's as big a deal. I still would love a kicker, though, man. It's definitely. All right, so like we yeah, said, this true. team, like I said, take a screenshot. You know what I'm saying post this. I mean, I'm telling you because I wish I had my team. I wish maybe I could even boot up Madden 6, 17 and go look. But 
has probably changed since then. But uh, yeah, like <laughs> I said, let I want to get to this Turbo Jeff game because it this game it, it should it honestly this is prob I don't know if it was how great you played defense this game or how bad he played offense. Probably a combination of one. One he wasn't comfortable at all. Cause oh no, no he, he was definitely never wasn't. comfortable. I, I I saw that and I knew, like I could just start capping a little bit mm-hmm. and then. I could turn on ag a little bit, and then that's where I started, you know, 28-7. That's, that's how it happened. Because I, I noticed that. That was the first thing I noticed. Oh, yeah. He was not – he was never comfortable in the pocket. Every time he dropped back uh, – every time he dropped back, he, he – every time he tried to get a play over 10 yards, he just really hurt. He really gave up, you know, mm-hmm. uh, what you going to call it. Yeah. A huge uh, sack or whatever. Now, what, yeah. the kick return was huge because, he, like I said, oh, he was yeah, so definitely. boxed. He was so boxed that it was like once he scored that touchdown, it's like – because, you know, some games are just super boxed. But then once you finally score a touchdown and it's like, damn, I got momentum. Can, I'm feeling – I'm back in the yeah. game. And to give up a kick return right after that was huge. And then he's like, damn. Then all that pressure is right back on your shoulders, you know? Yeah, yeah. But shoot. That like, kick return was definitely huge. Yeah, and I know the feeling of a kick return is like, yes, I don't have to play offense because I don't have to make reads. I don't have to do anything. All I do is just hit turbo and run up the middle of the field. That I mean, that's a great feeling, especially in a big game to get a kick return, man, especially to go back up two touchdowns against a player because at this point I think he already had the ball four or five times and just had, hasn't scored at all. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. And the other thing about – Talk about defending the, a tight formation because I ran a lot of tight last year and I know how hard it is to pass when somebody does what you do where they, they don't baseline and they just have everybody in the box and you don't know who's blitzing and where they're coming from. Yeah, uh, yeah, I definitely did the um, – in tight, it's just – if they – like it all depends on their motion. You know, you can motion one guy out left then you just blitz the guy on the right and mm-hmm. vice versa. Um, but I didn't really do that a lot. I, I, did, I did do it like on – on third and nineteens or whatever, some play I think long play I did that, and then he actually screamed. But it's just it's just hard when he disguises. That's why I was telling Allen to make sure he do in uh, in nickel. But he, I don't. He told me he didn't do it once. No, I so. thought he he was he was. Uh, I I thought like Allen bagged him. I just thought Jeff. Honestly, I'll tell you this. Uh, I I thought Jeff had the best defense. So I thought his defense was really good. Oh yeah, no, that that's what I was saying over there because every game I looked, you know, decent, and pretty comfortable, mm-hmm. and off like, except for that game. And that's why he came back because I wanted to run the ball three times a punt and play defense, which I was able to do. But that's why he came back in the second half because I wasn't really. All right, well, we you know, I got three run. points. Yeah, cause, you running the ball because you, I don't think you ever did that. One, well, you got fifteen tip picks. I don't know what. I know you don't have tip drill. But this game, you just got every, like, dude, it was crazy. Some of the tips, I guess, oh, no, I know. Adams. I was like, whoa. Yeah. I just showed that no, one. that was that was definitely. I got a lot of tip picks like over the whole tournament, but I got like four in this game, and it was some were kind of lucky. There's one where like Kyle Fuller like broke it up, and Jamal Adams just came out of nowhere and just ju- jumped on the ground. I mean, I, this isn't the most horrible possession, but right here, I mean. But you know, you know, as a player, when you got somebody super bagged, like you already got that mm-hmm. feeling. Like, all right, this guy's really not going to score that many points on me. Like, and so, and then you also had a feeling like I'm kind of bagged too. We're in a super defensive game right now. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a defensive game. It's just I, like I said, I got the free points because I got played good defense. That's why he getting ball first was like the be- best thing for me because. You know, if he did bag me in offense, then it could be the whole, you know, going the other way. Mm-hmm. But since he had got a ball first, I think I stopped him, got to the 40 on the punt return. And then, or if I don't even remember if he did punt or if he went for it. But, yeah, that's what, that was just started the free points. No, yeah. And it was enough to win the game. All right, what was the one possession I hated that you had? First of all, your whole, every fourth quarter possession you had, I hated. No, yeah, yeah, it was I think bad. it was this one Nothing right bad. here. I used that. You get him to a fourth and eleven. He's on his own thirty. My, like I said, you, both of y'all already had the ball about six or seven times, and he's gonna. Uh, he's just gonna. Pretty much a lot of Jeff, a lot. Jeff had a lot of cute routes, like post routes and corner routes, but they all just took entire. Yeah, there you go. You blitzed it. Uh, yeah. He throws the flat. And he tackles him. So now you get the ball on his thirty-six yard line, and you're up by fourteen points. So it's like all you need is like 36, 46. You're at a 54-yard field goal right now. 
Yeah, that, that was bad because I don't know. Bucks, it's like you can't run the ball like inside zone. He was shooting the gap. Sweep is just like sweep, sweep is, is so hidden. No, it's hit and miss. Like I know it was bad for a lot of the time, but I don't know. I shouldn't have. It sh- I shouldn't have been running that. I should have gotten something else. Yeah, this is the thing. Even like, just, obviously, you a bunch player. You a great bunch player. But sometimes in a game situation, man, there's nothing wrong with going to I form fullback dive. It's really especially yeah. now because even like right now, it's cool. Even even if you don't get the field goal, if you take a minute and thirty seconds off the clock. You know, because you run, you you lose three yards, and the next play, I you just when he screamed, well, he he didn't really scream, you just ran for no reason. You get an incomplete, so that's that's another, and for, and you snap the ball at fourteen seconds. Let me, yeah, yeah no, definitely snap the ball bad. fourteen seconds to the one. Like you wanted him to come back. That's that's why you always just tell people, man, I did it for the stream. They didn't want to see a blowout. I wanted to make the game yeah. close. That's all. You, that's all you got to say. Cause this this. <laughs> And then, like I said, you get an incomplete, then you get another complete. So after getting that tip pick or that fourth down stop to pretty much the game should be over, you you took a total of probably uh, 16 seconds off the clock and, and you punted the ball back. Where you could have did the same thing, take 130 off the clock. But then Jeff, I, I, I mean, this is your tournament, but then Jeff for some reason decided to throw in the flats 15 times and not get out of bounds once. That was that was what killed him really because mm-hmm. he has three thirty one on the clock, and a lot of times obviously people want to get out of bounds when it's under two minutes. But you get getting out of bounds in this situation is huge. Here, throw to the flat, go out, just run out of bounds. No, getting twelve yards and staying, getting six yards and going out of bounds is better than getting twelve yards and staying in bounds in this situation, because and by yeah. the time he scores, because of this, it's going to be a minute something left. But look, like this is it's wild how much. I time remember it exactly. Off. He did that like three, four times, and I was like, okay. Yeah, because I'm yeah, and and if you're going to throw in the middle of the field and pick up twenty yards in the clock run, that's okay. But if you're going to throw a flat pass, you might as well get out of bounds. You know, you're right there anyway. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, so it's like, so by the time yeah, he scores, he got the ball. Yeah, he got the ball with three thirty. By the time he finally scores, it's a minute and twenty two seconds on the clock. Now you get the ball back here. You're up seven. It's a minute twenty two left. What are you trying to do? Are you like an aggressive? I want to pass the ball and score, or I want to run three times. What's the thought process? It was it was it was confusing because my my boys t- kept telling me why are you playing conservative, why are you playing conservative, because that's all I do in the big games. What I used to do. So I wanted to you know get a first and then you know maybe like catch him off guard. Get get. I just wanted the game to be over at that point. So I was kind of like in not in a good place on offense. So. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just – I also thought I was folding. Like, I was very just – this is a bad spot. Yeah, but you came but out when, there, when, and I always tell people that uh, when you get the ball in that situation, the easiest down to pass is first down. Yeah, yeah. Sure, you did. You completed a flat. Point. Bang, you got a first down. Now, after that, I'd be cool with you just running three times and punting the ball. No, yeah, I did, but – like you said, first down, it was it was a safe play as well. So you know, even if I did get sacked, it was whatever. I wasn't gonna throw anything, force anything, and flat pass was just wide open. Oh, for sure. And this is why, if he would have got out of bounds on them six flat routes he threw, you'd be sitting at like two minutes and thirty seconds. It'd have been a way different game. But what happens is you do run, and then you run again, and then you get to the uh, third and eleven. He has no timeouts. It's a minute and seven seconds on the clock. What is the thought process? Because I think I, with the play you drew up, okay. I think I know what you was thinking. But go ahead, because I need answers. Okay, so I, I was just going to do three streaks, which I did. Because, you know, he might have been over-adjusted oh, yeah, or just run sure. from there. I don't know. Something. I, the plan was not to throw it. But once I see, I, I put a, the fade on the left. I didn't know like Dion would be able to get that. So I was going to take a sack or I was just going to just sit in the pocket, slide. Or, like I said, if I saw something wide open, it was going to be, I was going to throw it. And I did, I saw that, that it looked wide open, but I could have bulleted it. I definitely could have bulleted it, but yeah, for sure. it was whatever. And now you're like, oh, shit, I gave him a chance. Yeah, no, I, I, I got lucky there that he didn't pick it and, you know, maybe make a bigger turn. So, oh, yeah, for so sure. I was just, I, I was so mad, mad, upset at myself. Yeah, but then after that, you just bag his life. And I'll tell you the one play that I hate that he ran, and I... It was second down because he had a decent first down play. I think it was second down or one of these plays. He just ran the dumbest play. 
No, yeah, he ran off with Vic. So there you go. Now he comes out here, his second play from scrimmage, which I'm like, dude, he actually do got a little bit of life. 50 seconds. I mean, I don't even know timeouts, but he has more life than he had, you know, five minutes ago in the game. But he runs this mm-hmm. play with a fade, a deep crosser, and a drag. Now, if you're Jeff and you, no no person is going to lurk this drag in this game situation, he could have do that drag, got 10 yards, and got out of bounds. Like, because I don't know why he's thinking that you would – like, he waited to see what you were going to do. Like, you would ever give up that drag. Like, nobody is ever going to give up this drag in that situation when, you know, when they got to choose between a drag and a post. If it's fourth and one in the middle of the game, yeah, he might come down and alert the drag. But you got to know the quarterback, like, this drag is going to be open. I could just throw it and get 10 yards. Like, that's it. It It wasn't even that much of a user as well, you know. I just tried to just look at it and then go back up. Yeah, exactly, because you're not going to give up this big-ass 40-yard yeah, crossing exactly, route. Yeah. Like, you're, you're going to give up the drag. And that's okay. He could have hit it, got 15 yards, and got out of bounds. So that, that was just it, – it, I don't think it was a bad play call. Play call. It was just bad It was just bad execution. He overthought that. Exactly. And that's all. Yeah. Well, oh, I do want to go to one play in this game that you should, that you did, that another dumb thing Jeff did that was just – and that was the uh, – The goal, goal line? line? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was – here it is right here. Second and one. We're in the second quarter of a game. He's in the middle of the field, nowhere near the end zone. It's second down. Now, you're probably thinking, like, man, I'm going to just run my sneaker, my fullback dive. But then you see him come out in goal line, and you're like, this is an automatic touchdown. Automatic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, cause, cause so maybe, I was just – Yeah, go I ahead. had been doing that all week, and then uh, I knew that fullback dive was a guaranteed one yard, maybe even, like, inches or whatever if they came out and – you know, nickel or just, you know, some type of three, four, four, three. three. Mm-hmm. But if it was goal line and I saw what I was, I'm, I was just going to throw that. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, because, I th- and this is the thing with Jeff for me is like, okay, you can't do that because one, it's not, first of all, it's second down. It's not worth coming out on goal line for a lot of reasons. One, because you're going to get, you can have, yeah, you might stop them. But you can give up a big play. Not only that, but say a fullback dive. Like, you get past that first, that first, you know, line of defense, boom, you could take it 50 yards. Or a toss, you could take that 50 mm-hmm. yards. It's just yeah. if it was fourth down, I could agree with it. If it was, you know, the, near the 10-yard line, maybe. A- and also another thing about it is maybe Jeff has some wild-ass quarterback sneak defense or fullback dive defense. That's not a time in the game where you show your opponent you have wild quarterback sneak defense. Or That's great, true. You know what that I mean? True, you yeah. might have to save yeah. that for early in the game. You would never waste great goal line defense on a second and one in the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I didn't mean, even really think did, about it like that. Yeah, so you were just well, so much more prepared for that. Like I said, he just donated a free touchdown coming out on goal line in the middle of the field. But that's just some bad things yeah. he did. And you should have closed the game out a lot better in this game. But, yeah, I definitely should have, yeah. Uh, like I said, I mean, the other game I want to talk about, obviously, is the Joke game. You said it was probably your toughest because Joke probably is, was, like, you know, the most well-known player you played and, without a doubt, the most experienced playing as you who's not as experienced. And talk about going into that matchup. Okay, so going to that one, after he had beat Crush, who was a good player, mm-hmm. coming back from 13 down, I'm not going to lie, I was thinking – you know, this is probably where I might lose. You know, in 20K though, that's a good run. Oh yeah. So I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't nervous, but I was just thinking, you know what? If I do lose, it'll be whatever. I, I'll try. I'm gonna try my best. You know, I'm not gonna play scared or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, but he definitely has a more, you know, the upper va- advantage. I would say. Mm-hmm. Oh uh, yeah. By, sure. by a long shot. Yeah, we were uh, talking about sure. it. Like once you keep winning money and you keep moving on in the tournament, I, I feel like the pressure kind of goes off you, especially for your first time. That's how mine was. Like I, I, I didn't feel any pressure in any game I played when I won a man bowl because after I won five thousand dollars and then trip to Orlando, I was kind of cool to be honest. I was like, oh, this is pretty damn dope. I done played mad my whole life and I just made five thousand dollars. I just made a yeah. trip. I'm kicking mm-hmm. it with all the people that I watch play mad. This shit is cool. You know, and then so each game that you win, it's like, oh, shit, damn, I done made 10000 Oh, Once you make 20000 yeah. it's like, damn, I really caked up this year, really. So talk about yeah, that kind the of moment. Uh, yeah, the momentum, winning, like, your first two games, that's the hardest games, I would say, even if you got a lucky game mm-hmm. or, like, a easy opponent. You win those two games, you know, you just, like, exactly what W was saying, you get, you just start thinking, you know, all right, I made more money, more money, more money. Yeah. And then, 
It's like the, the, less, the yeah. less pressure you have. Now, this game versus Joke 1, you started really good on defense. The reason why this game was such a battle is because you did not score touchdowns. Yeah. You, you know, you kicked two, I, two field goals yeah. early in the game where you got a second and 11 here. And it – I, I I mean I wasn't mad at none of the plays. Oh, you did miss a super read because you chucked this post in the traffic the, on second down, right? Uh, on your first drive, then I think that scared you away from going back to the post because the next play I think you were in verticals with a post, and you had this post butt naked and you missed that one because you were. Let me like, see. I didn't I didn't see this yet. I need to see. Oh uh, yeah. Anyway, so you, have you watched any of your games back? Because I I shoot. I watched some points, but, like, some of the points where I played kind of bad, I didn't really watch. Like, the Jeff game second half, I didn't watch any of that. I didn't want to watch that and see yeah. what they were saying. Yeah, but like I said, that third down, when you highball the post, honestly, it was kind of a one-on-one to highball the wheel. You just got to overthrow, which happens. But you definitely had the post breaking back across the Oh, middle. yeah, I see that now. Yeah, on that play, the, that's the main read. I just can't think of anyone giving up the – you know, middle of the yes. field. I've seen Josh Jones and him running there. Yes, I, I understand. Like, There's no way. Especially coming yeah. off the pass you just threw in traffic in the middle yeah. of the field. It was like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to go back to the middle. I'm going to just take this high ball on the outside and, and, you know, live the fight another day. Yeah, that's probably what had happened. And that's not – that's not. I mean, that's not bad getting a field goal on your first drive, really. And then uh, Joke uh, – Joke oh, – I just came out shitty on offense, really, and you bagged him the first drive. Stopped him on a fourth down. Talk about defending bunch, you know, defending this corner route, you know, just a streak, a corner route, and then the in route coming to the other side because I think that's what he goes to on fourth down. Uh, I had known, like, that joke bunch. You know, it's not like a – you know, it's a basic bunch, I would say. So, mm-hmm. I knew some type of post or corner route and in route was there. So, let, let me see what I did. I I pressed the guy. Um, I pressed the in route because I knew an in route was coming. Uh-huh. Did he? Did I keep him in a third? No, he was. He kind of got pressed, but then I had a hook curl on the inside. Yeah, I didn't had the shade him right in the hook curl, waiting for it. Yeah, bagged it. yeah, and I didn't shade anywhere. Otherwise, you know, could have messed it up. So I followed it for a long time. Mm-hmm. I knew a lot of them more. I protect the sticks as well. So yeah, there you go, bang. So you. Uh, that's one thing about defending bunch. How I've always seen, like, man, even defending anything. If you can predict the right play. You can bag anything. Like, that. that's pretty much how I feel defense is in Madden, dude. Just catching people tendencies, predicting the right play. And I also think that's what makes great offensive players is keeping the de- defender on their toes, really. Yeah. Uh, makes we, sense, yeah. Uh, we're going to a little trips tight end action. You're trying to pop a run right here. Uh, yeah. Trying, yeah, just, just try to pop a run. Yeah, that, that is the thing really about nickel many. normal. Oh, there you doing? You're doing just a phantom spin when you might have even could have scored. But, yeah, no, they did tell me I did that a couple of times, just like a panic spin or whatever. Just it is tough, around. though, against, like, those those big nickels and the nickel normal, man. They Those kids do shoot inside zone, like, like yeah. unreal, and you can't trust it, especially, like, it's like, man, especially when you don't have, like, that running back. Like, you have a good running back, but he's not, like, Leonard Fournette or, you know, Ricky Williams. Mm-hmm, or anything, where he's so going to eat that hit. Even yeah, if, you don't yeah, want to get exactly. hit. You see Sean Taylor lurking over there. It's like, bro, I don't really. Man, there you go, bang. Oh, you almost got hit there. But like I said, like this game could if you complete, like I said, you hit that post and you get it could have been fourteen nothing pretty early, but he did a good yeah. job of holding the door and not giving up a uh not giving up a, a touchdown here. So he didn't yeah. kick three and then he goes down the field, he gets score. The one thing that was crazy to me that joke did that I cause he scores seven and uh you geez, Compton, I can't lie. Compton is getting super wild with the ads. I swear it's an ad every five For minutes. For real? Right. I, not dang. I haven't been watching this video. Bro, I, I, man. Now, you had a ball, right? You're down. Because you just kicked field goals, now you're down a point. But you're getting the ball. You got to go down and score points. It's like, man, let's see what happens. I got to go down. If I get a field goal, I'm back in the lead. And the time is ticking. And if I'm joke, I get the ball at half. I played pretty shitty offense. I feel good. Even if I give up a field goal, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. I just can't give up a touchdown. You know, that's how I feel. And he calls this timeout is the timeout that to me was just like, what? Because you're at the middle of the field. It's not that much mm-hmm. time that joke could get the ball back. This isn't third down. Mm-hmm. It's second down. Yeah. Yeah. And I just punted, like, I'll pin him deep. Yeah, but and this is the thing, like, okay, yeah, like, okay, so, bang, he calls a timeout here. I feel like that helps you 
Cause like now you got a dot, and it's like okay, I still have yeah. all I have all my timeouts. If I dot here on fourth down, bang! I mean, I I just I didn't like that timeout because I don't even know if you let the clock run here. Like I said he kind of I don't know if he I helped you uh helped you. Go he ahead definitely and get, helped uh, me because I yeah. would have been I know I would have been in a rush. I would have been I would have you know picked a play, ran a play, rushed it. But him calling timeout, I was you could see I was I had no idea I was just seven players in and out. That's gonna eat up all the time for me and like. Plus, if he gets that stop, like, if he goes in that half. But I don't know. That timeout definitely gave me a lot of time to think about what I was going to call for the next two plays. Yeah, I like I said, I didn't like that timeout. I felt like, like I said, it helped you. Uh, like, obviously, you throw this post route for a touchdown. I believe it's a touchdown. But All right, it got to the three, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's my point. Like, because yeah, the, yeah. the time could be at, like, 20 seconds right now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And even if it mm-hmm. – say this didn't get to the three, it got to the 10 – now you still have all three of your timeouts. The run is still an option for you. It's just it's a lot easier for you to have a chance to score a touchdown. Whereas I felt if he didn't call timeout, yeah, you might have probably got a field goal, but Joke would have had to would have been down two going in the half, to, uh, getting the ball out of half. So I like I said, I didn't like that timeout. I didn't like him trying to get the ball back here in a game where I mean, Joke it, Joke is one of the best defensive players ever, but he's not a great offensive player. Period. So for him to mm-hmm. try to force to get the ball back with thirty seconds on the clock and stuff. I mean, I I don't know if that was the best thing to do, but at the end of the day, you did score a touchdown without even having to use your timeouts. But uh, then we'll go to the uh, shoot. The best play that you had all day really was the the uh oh you gave this fourth and twenty two you gave up oh, Jesus oh yeah no I was I was that was bad by me I I thought he was gonna throw something towards the middle of the field I didn't know it, I had the baseline press and it would have been bad but. I forgot to do that. Um, yeah, that was because yeah, the play though. before I mean, that I, you did I got cheated. Every person, I mean. Yeah. No, I seen that guy come in. I'm like, oh, let's go. And then he next, he just throws it. I think he had gunslinger on Vic as well. So. Oh yeah, that was definitely you. Definitely blitzed every person and perfect timing. Just yeah, that was a tough play. And honestly, I thought it was a great play by him not to get like super max protect. You know what I mean? Like he put like three, mm-hmm. was three streaks. So yeah, he put out four rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah four because rounds. then he, honestly on fourth and twenty-two, like you could probably like throw a streak and like get a little truck or get a good animation and score a touchdown. Really? Yeah. So I definitely had to yeah use it at tight end. Oh yeah. So I thought that was good, but then uh, like I said, you got to a third and thirteen here on his thirty-two. Now Joke wants to go ahead and score a touchdown. He don't want to give you the ball back with this amount of time and only being up one point. So and and you said this guy you put Ronnie Lott in a quarter zone. Mhm. It was a quarter. Jesus. I was saying that well, I don't know it could have been like clutch trade or something. You know from last year there was a clutch trade would just activate in like the fourth quarter and a spot like this. That's what I was thinking, but I don't know, dude. I just I. He said he threw a little late as well. Yeah, I think he definitely threw it late. I think if you – because he said he was looking for that pass. I feel like if you're looking for it, it's got to be a super snap throw. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like he paused too much. If that was the first thing you were looking at, man, bang, that's got to be a snap throw for the most part. Well, I mean, that one yeah. game right there, You, I know you think that game's over. I, I know that's what I'm thinking, really. Because I would just play super safe defense and maybe even let him go down and get a three, but – Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? I, after I scored, I, for some reason, I thought I had to go for two. <laughs> Almost going for Mostly, two. But and, I, then, I, and then, I don't know if Joke never blocks field goals, but I'm, I'm damn sure trying to block that extra point. Yeah. No, that def, that you have to try to. Yeah, least. you got to try. Yeah. Here go Compton with another ad. I swear to God, hey, Compton, man, listen. You're a real one, but the ad, the ads every two minutes is, is, is wild. But, yeah, like I said, then you, get, then you do the SWAT. Let's see. I can't lie. Yeah. I, would, I would have picked this pass off that you swat. I can't lie. I don't even I, think it's this play. I know. I know. I I, I, for, I just do that. It's like a habit now because I, I, getting ready for Allen, he would just high ball like exactly that cross or whatever every time. Just high and ball. Then I would and never. You just look like an idiot when you try to pick it and it just stand there. Yeah. Yeah. So I I just hold L2 and hit the swat button. They, you know, they don't pick it or, you know, they don't animate every time, but it's a better chance for them to break it up like in the animation. And that's what I thought he did. I thought he eyeballed it, but he just – he normal throw it in. Like, you know. Yeah, that was a good lurk, though, really. You put a little wiggle. You put – I mean, you went down a little bit, went back up. That's that's why you get Jamal Adams, you know. Shit. 
Mm-hmm. And that that yeah, definitely would... ended the game. Now, me personally, I mean, I guess you're the forty one yard line, but I I probably without a without a doubt run this ball three times. I don't even think you do, but no, I passed one. I one time I tried to slide and I took a big hit stick with Vic. It was bad. Yeah. The first two games, it was just I don't know. It wasn't the clock management like this. You know, smart wasn't there for these first two games. Like I played it a little better in this game, but you know. I still did some time shit. Oh yeah, for sure. Because you gotta think like right now, if right once you get this ball back, he needs an onside kick to beat you. Cause you gotta take all this time or his timeouts. One or the other, he's gonna need an onside kick to beat you. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's yeah. uh, once somebody needs an onside kick to beat you, they lost right now in Madden. I mean, it's just you know what I mean. It's like that's the perfect situation you need to be in, and and that's why I would just just ran. And, yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Jesus Christ! What? 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 I know, I know. No, that was bad. That I mean, bad. listen, you do it for the stream, man. You wanted to turn the ball over. Yeah, the clock man. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a big, it's a it's an easy thing too. It's not all this stuff they do, making these reads, playing defense. That's the hard part. The clock right now, you gotta realize when somebody's cooked, and right now, joke is cooked. Oh, yeah, got to, yeah. I mean, I guess I was just run again. But anyway, you got out of this game because and because of one that pick by Ronnie Lott and then the next tip pick, man. I said, and I told you, man, it was nice for you to uh, be able to have an easy game in the finals, man. Yeah, definitely was. Um, but and then we got. The, been closer. I got a few breaks in the game to make it to a point where it should it should have been closer, in my opinion. Oh yeah, well, I, really I, well, well. I think the biggest play of the finals was when you the first play when you blew up the inside zone. Like, yeah, no, yeah, definitely. I think was. I uh. think for me, I me personally, if someone does that to my run, I, that's out the playbook. Honestly, I'm like, all right, that's enough of that. I'm not running that again. But that's it. I, I know mean, Ryan. Um, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Okay. Um, I know Ryan. He was he was motion. Uh, he was what's it called? What's the thing? Power blocking. I seen him get on the D, uh, old line like two or three times. And just call inside zone. So I had to like, I, I had to make sure the run just wasn't there because I know Ryan loves to run like, inside zone and keep you know just oh, pass yeah. one play inside zone whatever. That's why he had Ricky as well. And once that happened, it just and he passed every play. It was just in my favor. Oh yeah, for sure. And then a lot of times that play action, I swear, sometimes it's good against pass protection. Sometimes it sucks. And I felt like that day or that game, it, it just wasn't good for him really. And then, see, I just saw I got this first play versus Blocky, and what you do is perfect for how he played. I mean, you had to watch Blocky play, and it was pretty much Pat Sale. You know what I mean? That was pretty much it, really. I mean, obviously, he used, like, curl flat and other plays like that, but he le- he was just leaning on cur- on Pat Sale. And I see the first play, you already got the three rack out there, shaded down to guard those little drag. Mm-hmm. I knew Blocky was, like, some stat that when he played, like, Jay Waller, uh, Joe Rice, he ran Pat Sale like 12 times. Yeah. And every other play like one to two times. Yeah, and I, I think the, the three rack really is the, the, the only zone that really bags this, this you know, the drag that comes across the middle. Obviously, you're not going to find anything to really guard that post route. So mm-hmm. you kind of got you kind of got to just designate that guy for yourself and Jesus. Um, the play that was big on this drive was the second down because Lattimore just – I'm surprised he honestly broke that up. Lattimore was, you know, he could hit, but it was open, that vertical. Oh, yeah, when yeah, he yeah, broke yeah, it up. Sure. Yeah, that for was sure. just a big play because it went from first down and 10 to third and 22. All right, man, there you go. And then we talk about you not having hitters, but these guys still being able to pop a little bit, and that's what the last yeah, one did, really. Yeah, You know. He, he just shit. had a good break on the ball as well. Fast, whatever. Oh, yeah. Bang. Yeah, that was definitely a huge play, man. But, I mean, what – I don't think it was at the one play he fo- – what was this? Oh, Lord, Shannon, Shannon Sharp ate for you. Oh, yeah, he definitely did. Because a lot of times he was, like, f- flipping his nickel corner back to the uh, tight end side and whatever. I would just, you know, quick hike and boom, put Shannon Sharp on a what's it called and just throw it. I just know he fro- he forced one corner out. That killed oh the Ronnie him. Lott one. Oh yeah, that one killed him for sure. Mhm. Yeah, but that, and that's why I be trying to tell Skimble, man. Sometimes you get close for that. 
You get a little bit too close for that there. Uh, fourth and seven was bad. How the hell? I, I feel like you better have got your field goal here. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Once you go up 10 in the fourth, it's really – uh, yeah, like I said, I'll be telling Skimbo, man, once you get too close to the, the end zone like that, man, tch, that curl flat really not an option. That's when it gets tough sometimes, when you get to, like, the 20-yard line and it's like, I can't flood the corner route out again. What play do I go to? And that's pretty much when he do that, that – whatchamacallit. Oh, here go, right here, bang. Yeah, he's on the 24-yard line. And he tries to throw it over the cloud, and Ronnie Locke goes and gets it. I mean, that's. It, it, I feel like if you're going to flood out the zone right here, you got to have a flat route to the tight end or something like that. Just oh, yeah, it. definitely. I think Especially on second and ten. I understand, you know, like forcing on third, but it was second down. He could have put his tight end there, you know. Yeah, I think could've... if he put his tight end on the out route or a zig or a flat, oh, I think it, it, Ronnie Lott is down two more yards, and you can probably throw that ball over his head. But No, it would have been more. Yeah, it would have been open. It would have been a touchdown most likely if he had running a lot or if he had a tight end like yeah, on the dragger. Even going to pick, pick there is huge because even if he kicks three, which sucks in that point, is 17 to 13 is cool because he can still play defense. You know what I mean? He he can allow you to kick a field goal and still be in the game because he throws that pick there, man, and you go down here and you eventually get this three points, then that puts the game out of reach really. So that pick really hurt. Definitely was uh, yeah. uh, probably the, the biggest player of the game, the biggest mistake he made in the game to make it one-sided, really. Sheesh. But, yeah, like I said, like all these games, it's nice that you got the uh, the easiest one was the uh, the one in the, um, the finals. Shoot. Talk about yeah. – playing in the finals and going from I think it was the game versus Blocky going from the game versus Blocky and then taking that little break and then having to play for the sign. What was going through your mind and what were you and your little squad doing in that time period? Okay, I had played first and won, so I was just, you know, obviously watching the Ryan and Ghost game. I'm not going to lie, at first I thought it was going to be me versus Ghost, so I just went straight to, to you know, Henry and Allen and VY and started saying, so uh, EMB, you know, hitches, the mesh mesh post, wheel route, whatever. I had been just thinking about, like, what they run, EMB had run. Mm -hmm. But then when I seen Ryan went up 14-0, I'm like, okay, hold up. I got to I gotta look at for, for Ryan. But you can't really scout for him. He's too random. Mm -hmm. So I, it was really no scouting on that. They were just – they honestly told me, like, good luck. You're going to have to just, you know, think of something. And then that's what inside zone. Yeah, well, you were ready to stop that inside and, zone, you know, though. That was prim the primary stopping. You got to stop that first. Mm -hmm. And then playmakers as well. No? All right. Well, like I said, man, I, I don't, I've never had an easy, real easy game in a big game like that. And uh, through all the battles that you went through, it was nice to be able to have a nice, relaxing game and uh, – not have to really worry about there in the second half, man. So, like I said, man, congratulations. So, what's your mindset now after you won a belt? And, and listen, I'll tell you something. There's only, like, five salary cap belts, all right? You're with Kiv, Skimbo, Ghost, and me. I mean, we, we can kind of count stiff. We could throw stiff in there a little bit. But just think about it. You've got Kiv, Skimbo, Ghost, Dubby, and then stiff, you know, so that you, you and the sixth man to win a salary cap belt. So, I mean, obviously, we all know that salary cap belts count more than the draft champions belt. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's definitely weight. It's, it's, it's probably double the draft champions belt. And mm -hmm. I know everybody talks a lot about Skimbo's three belts, but two of them are on regs. So they're kind of half a belt, too, honestly. But. Mm, yeah, this is true. But regs is still better than DC by a long time. Oh yeah, so. regs might be half a belt, and DC might be like a third of a belt. That, that's pretty much all. But you have a salary cap belt, so can't nobody ever tell you shit. You are a salary cap champion. So what's next? Like, hmm. what's on your mindset for Madden after this? Like, I know it's only been two, three days. What are you? What, what's your uh, your goals from here on out? Well, I'm gonna get on DC, even though I I don't like it, but I'm gonna try to you know. I'm not just going to just relax a little bit. I'm just going to – I'm still going to, you know, keep working on that and keep playing and just get my name out there a little bit more and more and more. Okay. And then, you know, hopefully some organization or something, somebody hits me up and see 
where we go from there. Okay. So, 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 gonna... so what's it going to take to get you in some needed gaming for the uh, Madden Bowl? Get you a nice little T-shirt. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see. You know, because you know, we're trying to. But I lost. You know, Skimbo left me for the for you know for the real money. You know, I was over here just giving away T-shirts and and shouting them out in tweets. So he left. So you know, I might have to fill the void. You know, of my main money getter. But yeah, definitely, man. And I think, and I, I told Ghost this the other day, man. And I told like, what do you have to offer an organization? You have to ask yourself, why would an organization pay me? Is it just to wear their T-shirt for a couple streams at the end of the year? What am I doing different from everybody else? Obviously, you're a champion. Can't anybody take that from you? So that's your main selling point. Like, listen, I'm a champion. I did this, that, and a third. I won $100,000. I was on ESPN. I'm this, that. You know what I mean? But you have to continue to get your name out there, and you have to build from what you have. There's so many people that have one belts that aren't, you know, you know, capitalizing on the opportunity to have. You are the biggest yeah. name in Madden yeah. right now. Like, honestly, you are the best man player in the world right now. You know, and that's going to last. And Skimble talks about this all the time, man. And when he won Madden 17, man, he was like, man, I just don't want nobody else to win. And he won the, the Madden Classic and Madden 18. But after he got knocked out of draft champions, he was sick because he was no longer, he could no longer be the best player in the world anymore. It's always going to be about the new hot name. Right now, you are the new hot name. You are the best player in the world, and you have to use what you can to capitalize on that to continue to grow if this is something you want. Ultimately, you have to see what do I want and how can I use it because, like I said, you are the best thing since sliced bread. I was impressed, and I'm not easily impressed, especially by you young cats that really, you know, <laughs> play the game all day and everything. I can't keep up with these kids anymore. But uh, like I said, you got to just see what you want and how you can, you know, use everything that you've accomplished to get there i mean you're already going to be a madden bowl and hopefully and i will tell you this man draft champions will make you a thousand percent a better madden player period yeah yeah, nah, nah, yeah. but we'll talk about all this man like i said i'll definitely help you as much as i can not that i'm anything special but ultimately you you have to say it's kind of like a resume like what can i offer an organization you know what why would they want me mm -hmm. and the top of your yeah. list your top of your list is I'm the best man player in the world right now. I just won a hundred thousand dollars and plus another five grand for the what you call it. So you're at a hundred and five yeah, already. You know what I'm saying? So that's the top of your list. And on okay, my yeah. list, I'm only eighteen years old. Blah blah blah. I got this. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what you have to present. And yeah, hopefully these organizations do keep getting in the man because you guys deserve it, man. You put a lot of work in, and some of these organizations would be glad to have you. I hope one day. That needed game, I can make enough money to the point where I can start paying you young kids to do all the hard work playing the game. <laughs> because I just like talking oh, about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, bro, like I said, yeah, I'll look into that. Uh -huh. I'll definitely look into that. What all you said, and you know, I didn't really think about it like that. Yeah, for sure, man. I and honestly, a lot to me is um. Uh, what I said, I wish I, I won my money when I was old and I have bills and I have to live off the money. You know what I mean? It's different. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's a little bit different. Part of me wishes, part of me wishes I won a lot of money when I was young, but another part of me doesn't because I was probably a lot less responsible and, and going to have a lot, a lot more fun with the money. But you said, I mean, you'll have, I mean, listen, you got a bright future in this man thing and I really appreciate you coming on talking about these games and, and letting us in on some of your secrets because I have already stole a lot of what I saw and I might be going <laughs> to the Tampa Bay book just so I could do that post route. Oh yeah. Now Tampa definitely get you. Tampa definitely. I've already seen a couple people in there already. Yeah. I, listen, I, said, listen, I, I saw enough, man. It's not like I'm not running trips tight end or anything. I need this little tight end post. Yeah. No, I, I could care less about that now, you know, maybe oh, yeah. before are, I would listen, be, you already I would, got the bag, I would man. be just, yeah, exactly. Plus, yeah. you know how the game is. By the time you play Madden Bowl, it's going to be crazy different. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. But, all right, buddy. I really appreciate you coming on, man. It means a lot to me. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, enjoy the rest of your podcast. Man. All right, my thank God. You. Thank you. See ya. Yep. There you have it, man. My guy, Pavin, won the Madden Club Championship. Very humble, very cool. Just had a great run. Just really put it together. Really, uh, really stayed focused. Even though he made a couple of mistakes. And the one thing about uh, being a good man player, man, you gotta learn from your mistakes. And you gotta acknowledge when you make mistakes, man. A lot of people blame the game. Oh, the game cheated me. Blah, blah, blah. But sometimes you really have to realize, you know, 
what happened in the game, why you made a mistake, and what you can do differently. Ultimately, that's always going to make you a, a better player. Yeah. So I appreciate him coming by, man. It definitely uh, oh shoot, it definitely was was dope talking to him. Really, and picking his brain. Really, really, I could tell. You can tell when you talk. Obviously, anybody that, that that's that good at Madden, like we all are, really had like get excited talking about it, man. And you could tell that he just really loves the game, and that's that's the most important thing. And you're never going to have a success at something at the highest level unless you ultimately really love it. And uh, But like I said, and, and obviously watching the tournament, I know we all watched the tournament. I thought it was awesome. I, I was really anticipating this because we haven't watched any salary cap. I mean, the Mudhead thing popped off, like, but I want to say that was three months ago. Was really excited about that. Watch that, but this was the first chance to really watch the MCS, really watch the, that type of tournament and this type of, you know, for the big money and see what everybody's cooking up. So I was really excited about it, and it really turned out turned out well. I thought the broadcast was great. I thought they were prepared for everything. I thought everything was smooth. I thought even they were prepared for these things, man. I think it happened three times, and even like somebody logged out of the thing, and they had they had another game set up. The desync didn't take more than five minutes to fix, and they were really prepared with everything. Uh, the broadcast uh, continues to be amazing. Scott Cole and RG are beyond fabulous. Skimbo was unreal. I mean, I, I kind of the one thing about listening to Skimbo because I've watched so many man games. Talking to Skimbo is kind of just I kind of think how he's thinking. And, and I kind of predict, kind not predict, but understand what he's thinking. So it's, it's kind of cool for me to hear him talk about the game. And obviously I thought Cookie was good, and I thought Nick I thought Nick was fabulous. I think they all have a future in broadcasting, and it definitely helped the game. Having a couple different voices in there was cool. I said I, I was I was pleasantly uh, pleased with everything as far as the, the, the how the Madden Club Championship was laid out, how it was performed. I wish – the only downside I thought was when they had two games, had to switch back and forth a little bit more. That's all. I know they had the technology to do it, but they didn't, man. And But like I said, I thoroughly enjoyed the broadcast. It was awesome. Now I want to show you guys what I thought was the game of the tournament. I don't know. You guys in the chat, you guys below in the comment section, let me know what you guys thought was the game of the tournament because I'll let you know what I thought was the game of the tournament. And that, that I got to go. Me personally, I had to go with Clef and Clef and Mo. This was the number one, you know, number one game going into the first round. Obviously, Mo, I tell you guys all the time, he's a top five all time man player. And Clef is one of the best like up and coming man players in the world. You know, he's definitely a great player. And to see these two guys really duke it out on the stage in the way the game unfolded, it was definitely awesome. And I really want to break this game down to show you a couple things. That I thought each player could have did differently. I thought Clef was really kind of. I, I thought Clef made a lot of mistakes, and I thought, mm, I thought he played. I think he played as good as he could, and to still make all that many mistakes. Just and it's not even like gaming; it's just mental mistakes. And I, I let's get into that game because there's so much I can talk about this game and. Both players, I thought, were really prepared. I thought Mo, I, Mo is, is another one of the players I talked about joke. Probably one of the best defensive players ever, really, especially with how crazy he gets on defense and how uh, effective he is defensively. And, I mean, the main thing, the first half went back. Clef didn't score touchdowns. He got a couple field goals. He played good defense. He stopped Mo a bunch. But uh, eventually, it's really no big plays. The, one of the biggest plays in this game, Compton is just wild right now, chat. Like, Compton is wild. Like, we're going to watch so many. But uh, not here. Here, I mean, the game is pretty much going by fast. The one thing about Mo, even when I watch him play money games, watch it, he does not care about his timeouts in the first half. And I think that's wild. This is a huge play for Clef. Oh, he drops this one. That's and no, it's after he gets six points. Mo definitely dropped a lot of passes with Randy Moss in the first half of this game. Uh, Randy Moss definitely put the ball on the ground. Didn't not necessarily even put the ball on the ground. Didn't get the animation on the sideline. Didn't toe tap and also put the ball on the ground. So it definitely was something that because Clef, I thought Clef was playing fabulous defense, and then when somebody's playing great defense on you and you st and then you go ahead and drop a pass that was kind of open. That's when you get frustrated, really. Here we go here. Bang. I can't get that overthrow. You know what I mean? Like, you're, he stood in the pocket. He had good pocket presence. Thought he'd do a dot, which was a dot. 
didn't get a completion. That's frustrating, especially when somebody's when you're when you're in a dog fight. You want to get those type of passes. You want to get those type of plays, man. It's definitely it's definitely frustrating and, and demoralizing almost, man. And it takes a mentally strong person to continue to do that, man. Especially when your best player, Randy Moss, is laying down for you. Hey, we want to say uh, Mo going to run the same play, step up in the pocket, roll out a little bit, same thing. That time I think Cliff Clef got a hand on it, went ahead and swatted it. That's a big play for Mo because back-to-back plays, he could have had a corner route, didn't get it, and so he's stuck on a fourth down now. And like I said, Mo, he doesn't care about his timeouts in the first half. Me, I, I am like a timeout, you know, listen, I'm not burning my timeouts for anything in either half. You know, to me, five yards, giving somebody five yards or, or running, running two men under or stock cover two every once in a while is better than wasting a timeout. Well, we got a little fourth down play here for for Mo. I think this is one where he throws like a little out route or something, and Clef hits him, bang right there, a little in route. Clef just lurking in his zone, gets a hit stick. And uh, what happens? Uh, the next, oh, golly, Compton, my G, Compton is he? He want this money. Uh, one of the like one of the hugest things that happens here is that. This is wild defense from Mo. This is what I mean about getting wild. He actually blitzes every player right here. And this needs to be contained if you're going to do that. Just rolls out. Then he gives it, Then he gives up the post route. But what happens? Thank God, uh, Jamal Adams with the hit. Bang. Fumble. Gives Mo life. Mo was about – that was looking like 13 nothing. Gets the fumble. Now, this is a tricky spot for Mo because, one, he only has one timeout. And – you know, he's all the way backed up. Obviously, the game, you can hit crossing routes. You can do a lot of different things and still get in position. Now, Mo gets his first down. Now, Mo, Mo is probably one of the smartest, like, game managers there is. Now, he he probably not in the biggest hurry right now because he's still like, I'm cool getting out of half. I get the ball at half. I'm only down six. So, he, I don't think he's going to really rush this OD. Now, obviously, he wants to get points, but he doesn't want to punt the ball back to Clef or turn the ball over and downs and let Clef go up 9 nothing. So you see he's already taken 20 seconds off the clock. So it was in between, and he gets sacked. That's what's tough right now. And Clef calls the timeout after that. But it helped more that he did waste 20 seconds. He didn't hurry up because this could still be a one minute. So now Mo, his mindset completely shrinks from getting points to now he wants a first down to get out of half. Because I know if you ask him right now, he's just cool getting out of half right now. To be where he is, second and 19, he just wants to get out of half. And this is why when he runs here and slides, he doesn't run out of bounds, make Clef use another timeout. Now, he didn't get a lot of yards, but Clef only has one timeout left right now. Now, Mo is, I, I need to get this first down, or Clef is going to get the ball back. If Clef gets the ball back, he's pretty much guaranteed to get a field goal. So this, honestly, is one of the most under, underrated plays, and people say it's not that lucky. They won't look back on this as a lucky play or a mistake by Mo. I think it's a little bit of both. He gets this same corner route, and he... he Rat caught it and got hit. And what does that is Clef saves his timeout, the clock stops, and Mo has to punt the ball. Now, the one thing I would have did on this play is I would have aggressive caught this pass. Why? He said, why would I aggressive? Because he's really not in, not in traffic. He's open. You know what I mean? He's open. Possession caught could have worked, but the thing about it is, as you see this here, and he throws the ball, if you aggressive catch it, he's going to come back two or three yards and jump and get the ball. By coming back two or three yards, what's going to happen is it's going to take him two or three yards further away from the safety. By holding rat catch, he goes kind of right into the safety and makes the hit that much easier. I would have definitely clicked on, held wide, came back to the ball. Because this is this is open. This is a dot right here, without a doubt. There's a first down. Mo's getting out of half. And honestly, after he catches this, he can kind of start pushing again to get points. But because he rack, rack caught it, that allowed the safety to come down here, hit him, dislodge the ball. As you see, the safety, even right now, is six yards away from the ball. If you aggressive catch this, come back, catch it. Now, this guy might – it does bring you closer to this guy, but this the, the free safety is an automatic hit stick. And Moss – but at the same time, Moss could have caught the ball, didn't catch it. I don't even know who 23 is. Is that Lattimore cracking like that? But that was definitely a huge play in the first half that really goes unnoticed. After the fumble caused by Jamal Adams, Mo looked like he was going to get out of there 6 nothing. But he has to kick the ball. Another thing about this, Mo just, that's a bad punt. That's a flat-out bad punt. 
this needs to go out of bounds. Even if you put it at the 50 out of bounds or over here, that the, you know, the 48 out of bounds is better than what he did, really. Because anytime you get Tyreek Hill the ball against those guys, Clef's pretty much in field goal range. Even though that dude shut it, he's pretty much in field goal range already. And that's what happens. Clef eventually gets down there, kicks a field goal, bang. And I think, honestly, and, and what most should do right here is play super wild, aggressive defense. As you see, look, everybody, look, I mean, doesn't get more more wild than everybody manned up. You know what I mean? And then he's got a guard. The running back is the one guy he's got a guard. So he's just trying to keep Clef from getting another two yards or three yards from getting a field goal to go up 9 nothing. We'll see how he does. Yeah, he got, he's got the running back. That was that was most guy to guard. He didn't put anybody on running back. Bang. So that's just little plays inside the game that really changed it. Really, I mean, nine nothing and six nothing is a big deal at halftime. Now let's go to the second half of this game, and we're gonna watch another ad because Compton, my guy, he's tired of eating fly, fried bologna. He wants that money, and I hey man, I'm not mad at him. Get your money, buddy. Hit and record for an hour, then hit and upload is a lot of damn work. You deserve all the money, man. Uh, yeah, so we get to the second half. Mo Mo has been uh, class playing really good defense. I feel Mo was really bagged, but the thing, like I said, he wasn't getting the, the he wasn't getting the tough catches. He wasn't getting the tough plays. Here we see Clef with the with the J wall glitch where this guy wants to you know do the do the Cupid shuffle left and right and not pass rush. But he was able to get back in time and pass rush. Mo hit a seam down the middle, bang. So this was his first drive, I believe. He goes down and gets seven here. Yeah, he gets seven. Boom. So now it's nine to seven. Now we're right back in the ball game. And Clef, after struggling to score, Jesus Christ! I'll tell you, man, this man, this man, Compton don't play around. Clef will actually throw a dot. He'll actually throw a a seam route to Tyreek Hill to score a touchdown. Where are we at? Uh, oh, Mo, this is after that seam route. So Mo right now is down. Down nine points. It was after the seam, the Tyreek kill. So he's down nine points. It's a lot. It's not a lot of time left. He actually turns the ball over to Clef. I don't. I forget how he turns the ball over. I don't think he punted. No, he didn't punt. Oh, he got picked off on this corner. This corner route let Mo down a lot. Now that I'm thinking about it, this was just a little bit. He threw this pass a little bit early. I believe this is just a vert hook. If he waits a little bit sideline, that's a completion. And he just threw that one early. That had to do with the timing in the pocket. And Mo knows it, man. I do that early. He caught the pick. Bang. So that's another another play that's open. And I think just the pressure of 55, man, really got to him. And don't think he has the time that he does. And he really does. These guys are on his ass. That was a pick just throwing that corner out. Just a tad too early. Big play. Not getting a field goal there. Now this is where, I mean, ah, uh, 40 seconds. You're up by two possessions. You're playing pretty good defense. I don't think this is an automatic run two plays, but it might be an automatic run on first down for me. I feel like a lot of these kids didn't run the ball enough. I'm not saying, like, go to Deuce Close and run, you know, wham or run stretch or something like that, but just run the clock a little bit. You know, like, if you're if you're in a situation like this, if you're cleft, you want this game to go by as fast as possible. And if you're Mo, you want this game to be a lifetime long because you're losing. You're down two scores. The only way you can win this game is if you get the ball three more times. You know, so for me, I, Mo, I want the game to be long as hell. If I'm Mo, I'm like, damn, Clef, do whatever you can to extend this game. By you extending this game, you're helping me. And if I'm Clef, I'm like, man, I want to end this game as fast as possible. That's really what I want to do. I want to get out of here. I want to get off this stage. I want to get out of here with the win. I'm up nine points. It's about to be the fourth quarter. So this is where it's kind of like not that a run is going to – I'm not going to say the run would work, but the run would keep the clock running, honestly. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people didn't do a lot of. I just talked to Pavin about it, man. Sometimes you just got to pop a run and see what happens. Harry actually, like I said, he has this streak wide open. So can't get mad at he had a touchdown on the field. I don't know where he was going with his pocket presence right here, though. Like, what? Like, where are we going, Clef? Look at the pocket forming. I know this is glitchy. I know these guys can loop around. But you're damn sure not going to help your offensive line by going backwards. Sometimes you got to, you know, take that hairline of yours, step up in the pocket. Especially, I'll tell you this, guys. Now, when I play... 
this is my first read. Like, obviously, you want to look at these guys. You kind of have a pre-snap idea of what they're going to do. But this area right here is my first read. And when I see no spy, best believe I'm damn sure not going backwards. I'm definitely hugging up here, hugging up my center's ass, and trying to either run or play in the pocket and, and you know, make a pass down the field. But Clef, right here, <laughs> it's just out. Where well, I feel like you can get up in this pocket. And one, you got 10 yards on a scramble with Vic. And he just dip sets. Like, you're not going to complete a pass. Vic does complete wild-ass passes like this. But he just dip sets backwards, tries to get rid of the ball, but gets hit over there by, I believe that's Jason Taylor. So, nevertheless, then Clef runs on the next play. Or he completes a pass. I really don't even remember what he did. Oh, he completed a pass. But now the clock's running. Now you can almost, because that last play, if he would have took a little bit more time on that last play, this could have been in the fourth quarter. But he's going to have to run a play here. And Skimble pointed this out because it's just a little shit. He should snap this at, you know, one or two seconds because, and he didn't. Because if he throws incompletion, we're still in the third quarter. If he drops that somehow, we're still in the third quarter. But he caught it, so the clock ran out. Bang, we're going to get to the fourth quarter. But like I said, because he snapped that at 11 seconds instead of two seconds, if he gets an incomplete, bang. Now that we're into the, uh, we're, we're not into the fourth quarter. We're still in the third quarter, and you're extending the game, giving Mo hope to come back in the game. Because right now, Mo's, <laughs> Mo's like, oh, shit, I'm losing this game. Like, this is a this is a fight. And I don't know what Clef did to stand up all crazy. What did he do? Oh, no, I guess that's just the highlights. And right, we go, another ad. But, see, that's the one thing, man. It's basic principle of man. man. When you're winning, you want the game to get over with. When you're losing, you want the game to last forever because that's the only way you're going to get back in the game. And, and some people need to have a better, you know, thought around that to where it's like, damn, I got the lead. I got to end this game. And uh, where are we at right now? See, and here's another thing. How did Clef get down this far? So he's got a first and 10. He just, I guess he just completed a pass. So the clock is running. Right now, I'm old school. I don't care what play I'm running right now. This is going to one. And there's no problem with running the ball right here. None at all. Take it down to one second. Snaps it at four. Has a couple routes out here. Able to hit the drag. Bang. That's perfect, though. He only picked up three yards. But it's not about the three yards. It's about the 30 seconds off the clock right here. Because you're already up nine. You kick a field goal, you're going to be up 12 points. That's going to, He's going to need two touchdowns to beat you. Mo has had the ball maybe four times and has one touchdown. So if you think he's going to get two touchdowns, and it, with no, you know what I mean? And so it's like just take this time off the clock. You know, I have no problem with a run here either or a dot. I mean, whatever you believe in. But this will definitely get snapped at one. Not at two, not at three. It will get snapped at one. This was a great play. It's just hard to tackle Vic in the open field. Bang. Slide down. Now, this is where I'll tell you, chat, and I'll tell you, YouTube, I would probably, at this point in the game, this is probably three runs for me. Because what's going to happen is, where the time is, three runs is going to take you to the two-minute warning. I'm clicking on conservative. I'm going three runs. I, if I get in the end zone, God bless if I don't, it's going to be at the two-minute warning. He's going to be down two scores. He's going to need to push it. It's, I'm, I really have this game by the balls right now. I really do. And we'll see. Clef does some just some wild stuff, man. He really does. So right there, now I'm chewing clock. 1,000% I want to chew. Get this all the way back down to one and probably run again. This is, I mean, there's not even any thinking to it. I feel like if I'm holding somebody to seven points, I can definitely hold them to no points the rest of the game. I can definitely hold them out of the end zone two times. if, they, And then if, if they get to the point where – if you get your opponent to the point where they need an onside kick, you pretty much won the game. It's as simple as that. And here we go, Clef passing and throws a high ball. Incomplete, stops the clock. Not only does it stop the clock, it stops the clock at 2.38 which is a tough stop, spot to stop the clock because your next play might not necessarily get it to the two-minute warning. So that's going to kill you. You want this to the two-minute warning at least. There was a flat pass. Huge tackle by Mo to save his game right there. Now what happens is Clef is going to kick the field. I'm respectable. You could possibly go for this. 
But, you know, like I said, he hasn't scored. The game is dwindling down. 1,000% if I'm going to kick the field goal. And that's we can argue that one way or the other. I'm not mad if he went for this. If he's kicking the field goal, I'm not mad. But Clef decides to kick the field goal. One, you shouldn't come out in field goal. Because I, 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 I believe Mo could go off sides and stop the clock if he wanted to. But this is my point. You take a delay a game here. Why do you take a delay a game? Because that would make it two minutes and two seconds. So this extra point will take you to the two-minute warning. Because Clef comes out here like Boo Boo the Fool, kicks the ball there's, with no care in the world, now it's two minutes and three seconds left. That's not that crazy big of a deal, but it's a huge deal because now when Mo gets the ball, he gets a free timeout. Mo is up against the world right now with time and score. He's, he's, his backup is up against the wall. And Clef did, did him no favors because if Clef runs, if we go back to when he threw that pass, right? Second and goal. And the time is clicking. Second and goal. He can almost run. It's, it's pretty wild what he could possibly do because if he snaps this at one, well, he snaps it. At, he snaps it at four. If he snaps this as one, it's at two thirty-eight. Possibly the next two plays, he could possibly take this to the two-minute warning, to where Mo uh, would have to use a timeout. But because he passed, it killed. It just it was all bad, really. But this field goal, kicking this field goal this early was the worst of it all. Because now Mo gets the ball back and he got a free play. He threw the ball away, got intentional grounding. Did not come into play. But he could have ran the ball. He could have do a drag. He could have got two yard gain, and the clock would have stopped. And, and Clef, like I said, just little mistakes that are just kind of bad. And kind of bad, they're kind of huge. And they, they just he just gave Mo so much more life than he needed to give him, really. And you see him, the one thing that's going to kill you is this post route or this crossing route. Bang. Great animation. Moss finally stood up for Mo. That took eight seconds to get 50 yards or 40 yards, whatever it may be. Moss finally made a play for Mo. Got the perfect animation, stayed in bounds. Bang. Once again, if you're Clef, man, bunch, you can't let this corner route. You can kind of let him throw the ball in the middle of the field because every completion is going to mean 10, 15 seconds. And if you can get rid of that, it's going to feel good, especially a sack. is well, one. Oh, he didn't get a sack. He got an incompletion. That was a huge play, not being a sack, because the sack could be 15, 20 seconds off the clock. And really, if you're Clef, you want that more than you want you know, a stop. You'd give up 10 yards for 20 seconds at this point. Once again, no post, nothing over the middle. Mo throws it underneath. That could have been bad if he got caught in bounds. But he gets out of bounds. Catch your breath. Take your time. That's the thing what it's about. What Mo wants to do is score so he can keep these three timeouts so he can get the ball back. If Mo has to use any of these timeouts, then he's going to need an onside kick. Then he lost the game. Pretty much. That's that's pretty much how it is as far as onside kick is concerned. And we're going to watch another ad from my man Compton. Compton, man, I hope you're eating. I'm, 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 I might start boycotting Compton videos. But, yeah, like, I mean, Mo really fought this game, but Clef, like I said, Clef made it a lot. He's a great job running up in the pocket, buying some time, hitting Moss, spin move. God, Moss really fought right there. Bang, down to the one-yard line. Clef, what are you doing? This was a great play, man, just climbing the pocket and then playing the uh, – climbing the pocket and then playing the line of scrimmage. Because he climbed the pocket, because you know these rushers come in, you got to step up. Then – Go sideline along the line of scrimmage. Don't pass the line of scrimmage. Still give you the opportunity to pass the ball. Bang, that pretty much scored a touchdown four. Obviously, you love to get in. But uh, getting that close, you're pretty much in. The thing about this right now is that Mo is thinking, man, if I run and I don't get it, I'm going to lose 10, 15 seconds. I'm going to lose. You know what I mean? It's tough, but you kind of have to run because you're this close. But it's still a tough spot because you don't want – because like I said, if you run and get to 130, you're going to get down to 115. You're going to get really – but luckily he goes right in the end zone. So I don't know what the hell Clef's fullback dive D is, but it definitely wasn't it. So now Clef is like, damn, I wish I would have took a little more time off this clock or got one into one of his timeouts. Now this is another move that Clef makes. He comes out on regular kick. And Mo, I, we, me and Mo talk about this all the time. Like he's always been a big uh, onside kick guy. I'm always, if I have all three timeouts, I'm always kicking the ball deep, always, because I'm going to need a stop anyway. If I don't get a stop, the game's over. Period. I don't believe in an onside kick. I don't. I just don't think it's possible. 
Like, I just play the percentages. It's a point zero 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 two percent chance you're going to get an onside kick. Play this percentage. I'm going to kick it deep. If I get my stop there, I'm going to get the ball back around the 40, my 40 yard line. If, if I kick onside kick, I get my stop. He's probably still getting three. I'm down eight. It's just, it's just a rough spot. So I always kick it deep in this situation. There's plenty of time to make a stop. And, uh, what happens is Clef, Clef, I don't know what he's sipping his water or something, comes out in regular kick and has to waste the timeout. Another amateur move by Clef. So a lot of amateur hour shit going on for Clef when he he's he plays like a, a super tough, but a lot of little mental mistakes for sure. And now now Mo thinks, okay, I took your time out from you. I'm going to kick it deep. I, I I think it's the right move. Whether y'all would kick it onside kick or whether y'all would kick deep, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comment section what you guys would do. I would kick it deep. Sky kick it. Got to stand up right here, man. And I just talked to Pavin about it, man. The easiest time to pass the ball is on first down. Because if you get to third and 10, third and 11, it's going to be tough to pass, man. But if you can pass on that first and 10 when your opponent's thinking run, definitely the best time to pass the ball. And that's what Clef tries to do. Hits this little drag underneath. Honestly, this is the best case scenario. I watched this game. I thought it's over now. There's no way Clef doesn't get this first down. Second and two. And honestly, I'm not mad at any play call that Clef called. None of them. I'm not mad at any single one, man. I, I wouldn't be mad if he ran the ball three times and tried to get this first down. I, I'm really not mad at anything that he called. I, I don't think his play calls were bad at all. I thought, man, he went to win the game. I'm not upset at anything he did in this possession. The previous possessions, yeah, I didn't think they were great. But in this possession, boom. Very quick snaps. He has it. It was a little bit bad pocket, but he definitely has it, and Ed Reed makes a play, man. Ed Reed makes a play. And I didn't think he needed to have good pocket because it was so open. It's a good call. Like I said, he quick snaps it. It's the same play, I believe, Pat Sale with a drag. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, like I said, he, he just wants to – and Mo at this time, Mo is like, shit, I can't give up two yards or I lose the game. So his defense is going to be crazy. And as an offensive player, you have to anticipate that and say, damn, this is going to be some crazy-ass defense out here because he has to – hey, I can't let me pass the yellow line. So we'll see what Mo actually does. I believe everybody's man, the man, man, or cross. Some, but anyway, Ed Reed winds up one-on-one -on -one with Tyreek Hill. Now, this dude does whip his ass over here, and he's whipping his ass. But if you're even, you're leaving, and they're even right here. Clef knows it. Put some touch under the ball. He's got it, man. That's cooked. I mean, nine times out of ten, he catches this pass. All Mo can do is click on RB, knocks the ball out. It happens, man. It really does. Uh, Tyreek Hill is not the best, doesn't have the best hands. Like I said, though, nine times out of ten, he catches that pass. Definitely fortunate for Mo to get in that situation, knock the ball out. Definitely beyond fortunate. Clef is sick. Now, honestly, I don't want to say this is two-down territory, but if it's fourth and two, it might be two-down or four-down territory. If it was fourth and ten, I'd probably punt. Fourth and 15, obviously punt. But fourth and two, I feel like this could be four-down territory. So I feel like you have two plays. You need your best little short yardage play right here. I mean, Clef kind of goes back to this, a similar play. It's just a high low. Mo is lurking this side. And one thing, Mo plays such good defense lurking this side, it hurt him. And we'll go back, come back to that later in the game, lurking this bunch side on Clef. Because Clef is heavy, just corner route, flooded out. And it's so. what's bad is that this. I don't even think this guy's on anything. Well, he almost even had him. But when you're – so your whole read is high-low here, really. And so you're pretty much playing on Moe's lurk. And I hate playing on somebody's lurk, especially when it's Jamal Adams. You know, you don't know where the hell he's going, even though I think Dan Dillian looked like he had that corner route, really. But let's come back with a drag over here underneath, really. And what worked to – what works to Clef's favor is that because of the last play, Moe pretty played pretty conventional-ass defense on this play. When you really look at it, it's just cover three. It's just a, a weekend league cover three special. But he's going to come over here. I don't know what Clef is waiting on here, like what he's looking at. Maybe he wanted to throw the flat, and he surprised him that he's on his lurk. But just once again, where is he going with the quarterback? Then we just, like I said, it could be four down territory. You could go for this. But he decides to make this wild throw. 
Which, honestly, Vic probably makes that throw more often than not. And he gets the overthrow. Bang. Mo gets the ball right back. Kind of unfortunate play. I thought that was a little wild for um Clef. Uh, the way he was running around with um running around with Vic to make that throw it was a little bit wild. But I felt like he missed that read. Really just I think I think he had that corner route. I think we all think he had that corner route. He just didn't make the play. Then we got Mo down here and Clef like man's this guy. I think it's just the vert hook manned up. Bang, touchdown, Shannon Sharp. Sixteen seconds. And another rookie thing that Clef does. I, I'm killing Clef. I can't lie. I'm killing him. Because what what he does here is he comes out in field goal block. Knowing you gotta know your guy gotta go for two. How fast are you mashing A in rage that you come out and fill a block? Look, Kane's so happy. Oh, my gosh. Yay. But you come out and fill a block, right? So because he comes out and fill a block, right? Look, he's in fill a block. <laughs> Not prepared for somebody to go for two that just scored to go at one point. Clef comes out and fill a block. And he's not going to use his timeouts because he needs those to score. He needs us to get a field goal. He's only got 16 seconds. He needs both of these timeouts. So he's going to go off sides. Now, obviously, that's the only thing he can do. But because of that, Mo's like, all right, asshole, you want to do that? I only need one yard. Let's get a ball to Shannon Sharp or whoever you got, number third, Gurley, whoever you got a fullback. Let, let's go get a ball to uh, Gurley. Bang, I can put her on aggressive. I can run fullback dive. You already showed me your fullback dive defense is trash. I know I can run this in the end zone. And this is a big play because Mo damn sure don't want to only be up one point. Bang, right in the end zone. Easy. Because he, I guarantee Mo doesn't come out in, in goal line if it's two yards to gain. If there's two yards to gain, he's probably going to Randy Moss on the high ball. But because Cleft was not prepared, came out in field goal block, it allowed Mo to run this easy-ass fullback dive for a two-point conversion. So how many times are we going to see, see Cleft mess up? But all that being said, as much as I tell Clef messed up, in Mo's career of Madden, he probably regrets these two defensive plays more than any plays in his whole life. More than any plays in his whole life, I promise he probably regrets these two. Because he bagged Clef earlier, he bagged him. Oh my God! I got, every time I fast forward, we just get a, we get a. Oh, this is already OT, huh? Because, like I said, in, in that fourth down, when uh he lurked on the corner route and took away his high-low, yeah, it saved him then. But now he does it in this situation where it, just, it leaves the entire middle of the field pretty much computer. There's nothing in the middle of the field to stop this. Like I said, he's going to take this guy who's in his cloud flat and kind of take away the corner route. And what that's going to do is lead us all computer coverage. I don't know. I guess these are two yellows, another cloud over here. I don't really know exactly what they're doing. No, he mans up RB, and he mans up this guy. So he cross-mans both his yellow zones, and he guards. So there's no yellow zones in the middle of the field. And then he, he throws this over them. So if you're going to lurk the corner route, you got to put some yellow zones in the middle of the field. Like, because at the end of the day, bunch is about, I mean, playing defense is about anticipating what play they're going to call. If you're going to lurk the sideline, you have to have some middle coverage and just manning these people up. This is what I think is, is what is this guy going to hurt you on? Why man this this guy up, the solo guy? Is what I'm thinking. Because all the solo guy ever is going to run is pretty much a drag or Pat Sale. And you're not going to cover Pat Sale with manned up anyway. So, manning up, I'd rather this guy be in the yellow zone. Because if he throws a drag, God bless his heart. I mean, the game's over if he throws a drag for the most part. And if you man up RB, this is the vertical route, obviously. Or it's, um, whatchamacallit, or, it's a vertical route. So, you're man up RB for verticals. You man up this guy for a drag or pet sale, right? To me, if these two dudes were in yellow zones, you've obviously had better defense. 
Because one, if it is verticals, I'll tell you this, if it is verticals, you can lurk where you're lurking and still get back to this crossing route, honestly. I just, I don't know. I Like I said, uh, in Mo's life, he probably regrets these two defensive players more than any in, in his whole life because this one was just bad from the gate. Bang. Tackle, call timeout. So, Mo, and the next play, now it's tough because now he's close as shit. So now anything is option. Running back wheel, tight end, slant, anything. Flat route, anything can beat you. Now it's hard as shit. The last play he had play, he could have ran the stock covers and been better. Right here he runs with the same thing. Look over here, he mans up Moss. Bang, both of these guys are wide open. Any one of those guys can get him the first down, and that guy does. Boom. That was the easiest two passes Clef completed all day. Because who's on B now? Bang. And that's how he tied the game up. So, like I said, in most career, that's probably the two passes he regrets the most, honestly. And then we get to overtime, and this is where Clef fought. And Clef eventually goes right down the field and scores a touchdown, really. That was a great play by Mo, man. And one thing about this game that's wild is you cannot fumble with the quarterback behind the line of scrimmage. And that's and when you really think about it, that is kind of wild that you can't fumble with the quarterback behind the line. Well, like I said, where did we go to? Let's fast forward a little bit. Clef getting down here to midfield. First and 10 on the 28-yard line. All these guys watching intensely. Suspect looks old and weathered. Has a, had a long life. Cross man, cross man. Everybody's bagged. No spy. Remember in the beginning of the year that was a that was a whatchamacallit? That was a fumble. And it looked like that little animation saved him from getting hit stick too. Hit stick on Vic in the open field. That's automatic fumble. But now like I said, it's tough, man. You keep getting this close. Clef knows that he has three points, man. He's had three points no matter what. Can't turn the ball over. We're in the nickel G. Flip it. Clef is going to be looking for this corner route. Scrambled again with Mike Vick. That's, I mean, that's why you have Vick, man. A little baby scramble, five to eight yards every time. And I believe he cooks up the super dot coming down here. The next play, I believe. He just – is it the next play? It's just a streak, it looks like. Is that what he threw? Yep. Just a streak, man. He's, that's a crazy play. It was a good play because Mo, uh, Mo had to start getting wild right here, man. It was getting tight. Pause. And uh, Clef, you already got killed. Trust me. You, this was a pathetic performance by you. And this guy manned up. He's manned up. He uh, he cross-manned everybody again. And he was just too late getting back over. Now that I see it, and that won the game, man. Pathetic performance by Clef, but he came up clutch in the end, man. That's really all that matters, man. You know, it definitely was a, the best game of the tournament, without a doubt. Uh, yeah, Clef, that was amateur hour. But, like I said, he won the game. Definitely came up clutch in overtime. Great drive. Probably put together his best drive of the, of the tournament there. You know what I'm saying? Clef, you got killed for amateur time management. was terrible. Pocket presence was terrible. Uh, that's a lot of stuff that was bad, really. Yes, podcast will be on YouTube, Clef. Don't worry about it. Plus, you're a sub. Once I turn this off, you can watch the past broadcast. You know what I'm saying? No, I, no. Hairline look a little crazy. It's still fighting, though, man. You're going to be here one day. You know what I'm saying? One day you're going to be here. It's not a bad place to be. I'm telling you, man. They like rubbing it. They be like, oh, that, 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 let me rub you on your head. Trust me. It's the way to go, Clef. Get it done, man. That, that thing, that thing fighting. Your beard kind of fighting too. Like you don't have no like. All your beard is under, like under. You know what I'm saying? It's a little wild, but anyway, like I said, man. I I, I thought as good as Clef is, man. He had a lot of stuff to tighten up. A lot of stuff that. And I I talked about this with with Pavin is that. When you're getting so much repetition when playing at home, playing $20 games, even playing a $100 game where it's not that serious, 
you don't really pay attention to all the little details. And the fact there was no real leaderboard, there was I, I guarantee that ninety five percent of the games Clef has played this year were kind of meaningless. You know, and, and, and honestly, ninety nine percent of the games we all play in Madden are meaningless. And when you get on a stage you gotta you gotta execute a little bit differently. And there's definitely a lot of things he could have improved. And like I said Mo probably the two worst defensive plays of his life to give up that field goal to get in the overtime. Uh, but like I said, that was a game of the tournament. It did not disappoint two of the best players in the world. And Mo made a comment that, man, that tournament was deep. If they played it 10 times, it'd probably be 10 different winners. And I honestly don't disagree with that. I think at the end of the day, Pavin was the – I mean, he was the he played the best, put together the best games, played the best defense. That's why he was able to go ahead and come up with the victory, man. So I really hope – really glad that he was able to join us. Really glad we were able to uh, – really glad we were able to break down all the games. It's still a ton of games I got to break down from this this weekend, man. And it's going to keep us going all the way to Draft Champions. I believe Draft Champions, is the online elimination is next Thursday. Uh, but all these games from this tournament are going to keep us going until then, man. It definitely was exciting. It was awesome. A lot of mental mistakes, man. Skimbo called me halfway through the tournament. It was like, you know what? If I was in this tournament, I would win. All these kids are unprepared. And, and Clef was the main example, man. Unprepared. But super talented, man. All these kids are super, super talented and super smart when it comes to calling plays, uh, calling, whatchamacallit, you know, having man beaters, zone beaters, what zone to beat, what zone to run, blah, blah, blah. They're all super smart and talented. Is that game management, they all do better, but that always comes with experience, man. The first first time you get on a stage, you're not going to be the best game manager, never, you know. So it's definitely something we all can improve on, all of us that play man, man. Take the game serious take every game you play serious because that's how you get you practice how you play man the coaches always tell you that you practice how you play if you want to you know practice some bullshit you're going to go out in the game and you're going to play some bullshit that's how it goes so what i want you guys to do in the comment section man talk about what other game you liked and you want to see me break down we talked a lot about pavin's games i always talked about the mo clef game but there's tons more games man strafing and drag was a crazy game uh let me say man J wall and blocky was a good game uh, Allen Turbo Jeff was a good game. I, it's just it, I I can't even begin to keep telling you how many games were a lot. I could kill Canes for his game versus Strafen. Might have to do that. Kiv versus T Davis. I could definitely get into that. Kiv definitely. I thought Kiv laid down because I thought Kiv had the best defense out, and then he just stopped running it. I don't. I, just unexplainable, but. Definitely some games I wanna uh, I wanna break down and talk about. There's tons, and like I said, I, I, this has been two hours already, you know, so I can't go into a five hour podcast. So next week we'll definitely try to break down some more. Tons of stuff I could talk about, man. But I really appreciate you guys coming by, checking out the show. Once again, congratulations to Pavin, man. I appreciate him coming on the show, talking about everything that went into him winning and everything that you know he's been through in the last three or four days, man. It's really dope to see a young kid win. And I wish them all the best. But I thank you guys for coming. Please hit the like button. Please comment on what other game from the weekend you guys want to see me talk about. This was Needed Podcast, episode 16. Thank you.